Okay, now it's time to organize. Uh, me personally, I'm a spreadsheet guy. It, it works for me. Um, for some players or parents, you may have other tools that keep you organized. Um, the one thing I would recommend is not doing this on a, a pad and paper, this particular exercise, because there is going to be a lot of scribbling. All right, so I would do something electronic or maybe on a whiteboard where you can uh, draw something and then erase it easily. All right, this is just kind of a basic example of, of how I would put together a spreadsheet if I were uh, a 16, 15, 17 year old right now and I'm working through my list and trying to identify what schools I'm interested in and especially if you're having communication with those schools. Okay, so first thing is you gotta identify who's making decisions. So for example, we have two schools up here we have one that is Kent State. All right. At Kent State, Coach Duncan, all right, he will probably go out to some games and do some recruiting. And I'm sure he has a very good understanding of what recruits they're on. However, he's the head coach and he has resources and he has a recruiting coordinator. All right. He has a larger staff, maybe and more, more resources than a smaller school. All right. So he's going to rely on his recruiting co coordinator, Coach Simmons, to kind of lead the charge there and go out and identify who are the guys they're trying to bring in and report back to Coach Duncan and they'll make that decision together. All right, but Coach Simmons is probably more, um, more in, involved with the recruiting process right now as far as talking to the recruits, fielding phone calls, making phone calls than Coach Duncan and when it's time to make a decision then you would probably talk to Coach Duncan. Now some of the smaller schools, we have Malone here, very, very, very good small school. All right, I was actually out there looking at a couple of their arms. They're, they're, they're going to be very good this year, as they were last year. All right, maybe not as um, d deep with the resources as a bigger Division I school. All right, so Coach Crank, uh, he may be more active. All right, he may be at the showcases and going out to more games. And I'm just using Malone as an example. It could be any smaller school where they just don't have the depth and the coaching staff and the resources where the head coach is kind of the recruiting coordinator. All right, so start to understand who's making the decisions, who's the first person you need to contact uh, that would help guide you through the process. So if you are a sophomore making videos and you are interested in a smaller school, you're probably pretty safe sending that to a head coach. All right, um, at a SEC school, all right, if you're lucky enough to find the head coach's email address, um, a lot of them are not available, but if you are and you send it to them, I would imagine he has a lot of things going on. And it's no disrespect to you or any other recruit, but he has a heck of a lot of responsibilities both within the program and also within the community and the university. So the chances are that he's going to sit there and watch a five minute video. It, it, it's probably pretty slim. So I would either pick, um, if you're a pitcher, maybe send it to the pitching coordinator, um, pitching coach. If you are a position player, maybe send it to uh, the infield coach. But more in particular, I'd probably send it to the recruiting coordinator. That way he gets it. He can then say, okay, I like this pitcher and show it to the pitching coach. Okay, so I would send it directly to the recruiting coordinator at the higher levels, right? And at the lower levels, maybe send it to the head coach. Or if you see that they actually do have a recruiting coordinator, that that is uh, one of his main responsibilities. Send it to him, and then start kind of tagging and organizing what you're doing. That way, you're not sending the same video to the same coach uh, five times in a month. All right, so note that information down. If you get a camp uh, email from a, a school or a coach, note that down. If you make a phone call to a coach, note that down. Um, especially at an early age, and I know you may be watching this thinking, well, shoot, I'm in ninth grade, nobody is on me right now. All right, I, I've only been to one camp. Why should I start creating some big database or some big spreadsheet? All right, the farther along you go in this process, there's gonna be a lot of information. And for recruits, it goes, uh, for most recruits, it goes where you kind of feel like no one really likes you. You're out here, you're visiting all these schools, you're going to all these camps. Um, your coaches haven't said anything that some schools wanted to talk to you or were interested, and then it just happens, all right? Depending on your ability, it could be your freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior year, but it happens. That first school says, we like them, we want them on campus. All right, you go for your visit, they make you an offer, and all of a sudden, you start getting more phone calls. Or if you're um, a sophomore or freshman, your high school coach calls you in his office and says, hey, I need you to call these three schools. They reached out to me. They want to talk to you. 
All right, and there's a little bit of a ground swell. All right, so it kind of goes from nothing to kind of a, a lot of responsibility as far as uh, calling coaches back and, and trying to get on campus. So you, you want to stay organized so when that moment comes, you're not overwhelmed because almost all the time it's not going to come in a time that is um, good for you. Right? So you may be in the fall and you're playing football and you got a big school load and you, you're in some AP class and um, your dad is traveling for business this month so you got a lot of home responsibilities and all of a sudden there's your groundswell. And you have to talk to all these colleges and return all these emails and they want you on campus. And if you don't already have that information in front of you, all right, it can be very difficult to find the time to kind of map things out and know what is what unless you're already prepared for that and being proactive. Now with the timeline, um, I know I said previously that if you're a younger guy you want to target those bigger schools and then you feel that that's truly where you want to be and where you could potentially belong then go ahead and do that. Um, however, there has to be some type of reality so you're not starting um, in another atmosphere right? when you should be starting over here. You need to start somewhere right? and when you're starting to try to come up with your timeline um, there needs to be a little bit of self-awareness and probably some good mentorship around you so you're not going all in um, with a particular conference or a particular level and kind of spreading yourself thin. So for example, if you are an eighth grader or freshman and you do want to play Division I baseball and you kind of like the SEC and ACC, that doesn't mean that you need to target all 20 of those schools and go to all their different camps, right? Kind of nibble a little bit, identify maybe one or two of those schools, get on campus, get a feel for it, um, get a feel for the talent level that is surrounded, um, surrounding you at those camps, get a feel for if those coaches seem like they're genuinely interested in you maybe after you're around a BP or they're coming up and talking to you or they're just kind of moving on and they're talking to everybody else. That'll give you a pretty good gauge. You can't be emotional about it all right, because it's just part of the business and you, as you get older you start to get more comfortable with that side of things and understand that they have a job and their job is to win baseball games. Sometimes they're right about recruits, sometimes they're not. All right? But you will get an idea pretty early on if you're an eighth grader or a freshman going to some of these camps, if those coaches are gravitating towards you. All right? But when you're coming up with your timeline, um, try to start coming up with schools or conferences rather than saying, okay, Division II, so 700 Division II schools. All right? that, that is now my target and I'm going to try to get to these camps and yada, yada, yada. All right? Start to try to have an idea and working off of that top nine list when you're starting to identify what showcases you want to go to, uh, what camps you want to go to, and especially with showcases. Okay, And there's kind of a uh, term that a lot of parents and players will use is that well, showcases are money grabs. Well, they, they always say it's just a money grab. All right? Some of them are. Some of them are. Uh, I'll be completely honest, uh, but some of them are not. All right? A lot of these showcases do a very, very good job. They work extremely hard. They have a very good um, very good reputation and relationships with college coaches and are very trustworthy and trusted by those college coaches. Um, so PBR, for example, they do a very nice job. They really do. Um, so if they're doing a showcase and players are coming there, depending on the time of the year, because right, there are some restrictions when colleges can come off campus, especially Division I, uh, but they usually can get some pretty good schools there. Right, and especially the invite onlys, I mean, shoot, the Futures games up in Indiana every year, pretty much, it may be every single Division I school, but it's pretty much every major conference, uh, every major school is there recruiting and looking for, for players. So for example, I mean, if you want to break it down, they're, they're a showcase company and they are not a money grab in my opinion. Right, there are some other programs and uh, companies that do the same thing that are pretty good. And then there's some others that do not do a good job, that do not have good relationship with schools and you end up paying $500 and you get there and there's 250 kids and four schools there. And they just run you through, you get three ground balls, five rounds or five swings in BP and they get you out of there. All right. So if you're trying to distinguish, if you're early on and you're getting all these emails and phone calls, you got to come to this, you got to come to that. 
Find someone you trust. If you play here, maybe it's me, maybe it's Coach Larry, uh, maybe it's your uh, head coach or your assistant coach, maybe it's your high school coach, maybe it's um, your older brother that's been through this process. Find somebody that you can kind of filter the information through and say, hey, I got this. Is this legit? They want me to go to California because they think I'm the best third baseman in the country and it's $5,000. And but they say I really got to be there. They keep calling me. All right, is this legit? Chances are it's probably not. All right, so we'll help you out with that if you do play here. Um, if you do not, find somebody that you trust that you can filter that information through. Otherwise, you'll go broke, and you're going to stretch yourself thin. And you also have to leave some resources, both time and money, to be able to get on campus to those colleges that you are targeting.